Welcome to another edition of Hey DT. Hey DT is a series of videos I do where I respond to viewer questions and comments. These questions and comments, they typically come from comments on the videos posted on YouTube and Odyssey. Sometimes these questions and comments, they come from social media sites like Mastodon, Reddit, and sometimes through email. And the very first question I want to read is, Hey DT, in the last few days, my computer has started to power off on its own. I turn my PC on and I use it for a few minutes and it shuts itself off. I'm using Ubuntu 2004, what could be the problem? Well, first we should talk about Ubuntu 2004. That has absolutely nothing to do with your problem. The problem here is not a software problem, so it's not Ubuntu or Linux or, or any operating system or any piece of software running on your computer that's causing this issue. This is actually a hardware problem. You have a hardware failure going on. This is actually a very common computer problem. If you uh, have had computers for a number of years, you will eventually experience this exact problem. And what this is, is your CPU is overheating and the computer is shutting itself down to prevent it from doing permanent damage. So what this is going to be is uh, in your CPU, you probably have a CPU cooler, a fan, a liquid cooler, something to keep that thing cool. And that fan or that liquid cooler has failed. It has quit working. And so your CPU and, you know, after running for a few minutes, eventually reaches a critical temperature and your motherboard has a safety on it that shuts your computer down once your CPU reaches a certain temperature, again, to prevent you from doing permanent damage to your computer. The good thing is these are easy fixes and they're cheap fixes. So if it's just a fan needing to be replaced, you know, go to Best Buy or whatever electronic store, computer store, go get you a new CPU cooler. And th these things are very easy to remove the old one and, and put the new one on. You don't need to pay Best Buy or the Geek Squad or anybody to do this for you. Again, this is a very simple uh, fix it yourself kind of project. So again, this almost certainly, I would say 95% of the time, the problem he's describing here is going to be uh, a CPU cooler that has failed. The next question I want to read is, Hey DT, might be an unpopular opinion, but it would do you good if you chose to use an IDE for this kind of stuff. You could easily avoid these errors. What he's talking about here is I did a video uh, many months back on getting started with Xmonad. And I think I took a brand new virtual machine of Ubuntu and started with a Ubuntu GNOME. I think I just opened a terminal and did everything in Vim rather than a proper IDE like Emacs, which is you know what I use on a daily basis. And he's right. I could spot a whole lot of errors if I used a proper IDE like Emacs because it would tell me you know the Haskell code is wrong or I didn't import this library, yada, yada, yada. But here's the thing on these kind of beginner videos. I like making mistakes on those videos. I like making mistakes so I can show you guys how to fix that mistake when you make it. I know, you know, it, it, maybe it doesn't make for the most entertaining kind of content, but for educational purposes, I actually like it when I make mistakes. Uh, sometimes unintentionally, I make mistakes. And instead of being embarrassed about it, again, I, I actually think there's real value in me making those mistakes on camera and then solving those mistakes on camera. The next question. Hey, ADT, why the clickbait titles and thumbnails? Well, take the word itself, clickbait. I'm trying to get people to click on my videos. <laughs> I mean, that's why do you think I do it? <laughs> this is a very strange question. I get this question all the time. Why the clickbait thumbnails? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I want people to actually watch my videos. And sometimes I'll even get other content creators posting this kind of stuff. Hey DT, why don't you use the clickbait? I don't use clickbait. And I'll go check out their channel. And their channels, you know, maybe have a couple of hundred subs. Their videos don't get hardly any views. It doesn't look like there's any activity on their channel at all. And these people are complaining about my clickbait, right? <laughs> I'm making some kind of egregious error. No, I'm playing the game. I'm playing the game right and I'm winning at the game. If you're not using clickbait, you're not really playing the game. Moving on to the next question. Hey DT, I'm a computer engineering student. Should a person, especially students like me who watch you and people like you, who are constantly promoting and spreading awareness of free and open source software, the free software movement, the free software foundation, etc., should we study hard and apply for internships or jobs at places like Microsoft? I'm not talking specifically about Microsoft, but all the other tech giants too. So this person is a free and open source software zealot who's going to school for computer engineering and wants to know, should somebody who really advocates for free and open source software, if they're able to, should they go to work for 
a company like Microsoft or Google or Facebook or Apple? I'll answer this in one word. Hell yeah. I mean, for one thing, those are high paying jobs. Those are good jobs. And the other thing is we need people working at those companies that are free and open source software zealots and all these companies microsoft google facebook you know they hire people that have good knowledge with open source software and we need not just people that know open source working for these companies we need people that actually are big proponents of open source the movement because once enough of these free and open source software zealots have infiltrated these big companies like microsoft then we're going to start seeing real change real change not just with these companies but real change with the world because microsoft google apple these are trillion dollar companies i mean they control so much that happens globally around the world and if enough of you free and open source software zealots work at these companies you know once we have large percentages again then you start seeing real change some of these people if they get in now you know in a decade or two you work there long enough eventually you'll be in positions of real power some of you guys may eventually become ceos of these large companies and that's when things i think will get really interesting and really fun once we have you know some real free software zealots at the top of these corporations the next question, hey DT, there is this channel that is posting your videos as their own along with other YouTubers videos and just putting a different thumbnail. I tried reporting it, but YouTube makes it difficult. Here is a link to their most recent video of yours. And I'm not going to share the link because uh, and there's no reason to spread awareness of this scummy YouTuber. And there's actually multiples of these because I, I occasionally get messages from you guys hey this guy ripping off your video he's not giving you any credit yada 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 and this particular person mentions that youtube makes it very difficult to report this kind of stuff yes reporting anything on youtube kind of sucks they make it very difficult you got to jump through a lot of hoops to actually report anything I, I, i'm assuming they do that because of how large youtube is you know they would get inundated in uh, I guess false reports <laughs> so they make it kind of hard so you really got to try to actually report something but yes uh, I, I actually checked the link of the video he sent me the guy uses my videos which are all licensed under creative commons license meaning you're free to actually use my video edit my video modify my video in any way you can do that because of creative commons the one i license my videos under anyway allow for that the only thing you have to do and this is with all creative commons license is you do have to give an attribution you do have to actually credit me as being the original author of that video and this person is not doing that for my videos or any of the other videos and reporting this guy it's not even worth it the video that he ripped off of me was a video i did over a year ago he posted his video a few months ago my video got like fifty thousand views his video had two views <laughs> on it so you know and any if even if he had a, a large amount of views on that video I mean, the Linux space is kind of small. Most of the people watching his video are going to know it's not his video anyway. They're going to recognize me, right? I'm, a, I'm a, a pretty big fish in a rather small pond. So it's not like he's going to get any kind of real credit for the video he ripped off of me. What's really interesting about this particular guy, though, he ripped off the video and he cropped it because I have a little DT logo in like the bottom left of the video. So he actually cropped off like a hundred pixels of one side of the video and then he resized it and stretched it. It looks all funny, but he did that because he didn't want the DT logo in it because it might give, give it away and then DT actually made that video even though there's a big, you know, bald-headed guy in the middle of the screen talking about Linux. You guys know that can only be one person, right? Moving on to the next question is, hey DT, just moved to Linux and your videos have been immensely helpful. I recently saw your video on Nix OS and was wondering if there were reasons why it wasn't your daily driver or if you just liked Arco better. So the reason I stick with Arco right now is because I'm going to run an Arch Linux based distribution because everything I do is based on Arch. As far as you guys know, I'm working on my DTOS script, which is a post installation script built around Arch-based Linux distributions. I have my own repository of software for DTOS. They're all Arch packages. I make proper Arch Linux packages. And that all that work that I'm doing for that, you know, I, then I, I'm not going to run a completely different Linux distribution with a different packaging system and everything for my main production machine because I need an Arch-based system to test out all the Arch stuff I do. <laughs> So that's why I run Arco because it's Arch Linux based. And the reason I run Arco is because I installed Arco 
and I like it. It worked. There's no reason to wipe it out and install anything else. But I mean, I've ran Manjaro in the past, another great Arch Linux based distribution. I've run mainline Arch, of course. Um, I've tested Endeavor and, and Garuda on test equipment. Those are fine. I'd be happy with any of those. For for now, though, uh, again, Arch is kind of where I have to be just because I've already put so much effort in being a part of the Arch ecosystem. I would have to scrap so much work that I've already done and start completely over if I moved to something else like NixOS. And the next question is one I get all the time, and I don't think people have really thought this through enough, so I want to address it here on camera. Hey DT, I have a challenge for you. Go for a month without any GUI, window manager, desktop environment, only use the default text terminal. And when he's talking about the text terminal, I'm assuming he's talking about a TTY, right? So we're not even going to install XORG or anything, we're just going to live in a TTY prompt. Now. Could I do that for a month? Yes, I could. Would you guys get a single video about that? No. How can I record a video without a graphical environment, right? So, uh, um, yeah. Could I do it? Sure. You know, I, I would have no problem if I didn't do the YouTube channel, but obviously I can't record a video and not have a graphical server installed on my distribution. I, I also couldn't edit video at the command line. I couldn't create a thumbnail at the command line. Uh, obviously all of this work is graphical work, so I need to be in a graphical environment to do that work. Now anything else, could I browse the web in a TTY? Sure. Yeah, I could live happily in a, in a command prompt for thing, for normal stuff like browsing the web or even listening to music. I could listen to, you know, Pandora or whatever through the command line. Uh, you know, I, I could get away with a lot of stuff, but I couldn't get away with actually making content for this channel strictly at the command line. And the next question comes from a, a comment that I got on my video about Ubuntu 21.10. He writes, Hey DT, you mentioned Ubuntu needs to leave GNOME, so what desktop environment would you recommend in its place? Like how you recommended Brave instead of Firefox. So he's talking about in that same video, I said they should drop Firefox and move to Brave as their default browser, because I think Firefox is kind of a, a dying product anyway. And then I said they should also leave GNOME. They should quit using GNOME as their default desktop environment. But I didn't give an alternative to GNOME. And I think if I were Ubuntu, what I would do, if I was going to make the change, I'd make a real change. So don't move to another GTK based desktop environment. So don't move to XFCE or Cinnamon or Mate or Budgie or any of that stuff. If you're going to make a change, make a real change. And I think KDE Plasma makes the most sense. I think KDE Plasma is the best looking desktop environment on Linux. I think it's the most mature. It's rather lightweight as far as system resource usage these days. I mean, typically it's using about 500 megs of RAM in my testings. And again, it just looks good. Uh, we have so many users coming over from Windows right now that don't want to go to Windows 11 and they're exploring moving to Linux. KDE Plasma, that desktop environment is perfect for the Windows user. I think Ubuntu would make huge strides in their kind of waning market share right now. I think that maybe they would actually start gaining some of that popularity back that they've lost in recent years just by making that switch. Kubuntu with KDE is such a, a great distribution. So they've already got this distribution made. Just make Kubuntu Ubuntu. Make Kubuntu your flagship product and I think the community would respond very kindly to that. And the final question is, hey DT, stop talking bad about Mozilla Firefox. Firefox is the only thing stopping Google from having a total monopoly regarding web engines. Okay, what does that have to do with me not talking bad about Firefox when the CEO of Firefox is, is doing ridiculous stuff like talking about censorship and actually supporting internet censorship? That goes completely and totally against anything that the free and open source software movement stand for. And just because you know I, I don't like Google having a monopoly of the web doesn't mean I'm not going to call out that kind of crap. And, and at the end of the day, Google, yes, Google is not perfect, right? They're definitely, I wouldn't say they're a friend to the free and open source software movements. But guess what? If Google isn't supporting this kind of internet censorship through their browser and Firefox is, guess what? I'll use the dang Google browsers. 
because at the end of the day, it's more about ideology. It's about actually supporting free and open source software than it is about, I don't like this particular company or not. And the other thing is we can't get into this mindset where we're stuck in our ways, where, you know, Mozilla was always so supportive of free and open source software. So therefore, we always have to support Mozilla, even when they're completely and totally wrong. No, no, no. And also, we don't just completely on Google because, you know, they've been so bad as far as free and open source software in the past. They've done a lot of nasty things and we'll never forgive them for that. No, no, no. We, we can also, you know, especially if Google turns around and really starts doing more with free and open source software and if Google is out there actually supporting uh, free speech, digital rights, digital privacy, the things, you know, not like the free software movement really stands for then heck yeah, I'll get behind any, anything regarding that with Google. And if Mozilla is standing in the way of that kind of stuff, guess what? I will not be supporting Mozilla and, and they will definitely hear about it from me and they should hear about it from you. Now, before I go, I need to thank the producers of this episode. And of course, I'm talking about the following. Gabe, James Mitchell, Paul, Scott, Wes, Akami, Alan, Chuck, Commander Angry, Kurt, Dioka, David, Dylan, Gregory, Heiko, Lee, Maxim, Michael, Mike, Nitrix, Erjan, Alexander, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Raver, Rip, Robert, Steven, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of this episode. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen, too. These names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I just have you guys, the community. If you like my work, please help support me. Subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.